Well, hey there, my name's Jay. Welcome to my booth. I work in voiceover and I also do quite a bit of audiobook narration. So here are five tips from a professional audiobook narrator to take or leave. Tip number one, read the book. It may seem like a no-brainer to some folks, but this is a step that many of us, myself included, can be guilty of at least wanting to skip and just wanting to get straight into the recording. But trust me, slow is fast when it comes to audiobook narration. That'll somewhat be a theme for some of these tips here. Reading the book beforehand sets you up for success in a lot of different ways. The most important of which I think is as a storyteller, you want to know the arc of the story with fiction in particular. Uh, you want to be able to take the listener on a journey to guide them through certain things. If there's a moment where you can build suspense and sort of build tension as well and then take them around a corner to where something changes that can be really thrilling additionally for character arcs it's helpful to have at least an idea of where the characters are heading uh, if for example the best friend of the protagonist ends up being the villain at the end of the story or there's a massive betrayal that's helpful knowledge to know and work towards in your narration if two characters start off enemies but then end up in a romantic relationship also another example of something that's thrilling to work with. Uh, another thing that's really cool to work into your narrations is if something shows up in chapter one and it's just kind of there, and then in chapter 15, that thing was super important. Well, planting that seed in chapter one then gives you a huge payoff in chapter 15. You can think of it in film if a filmmaker holds the shot on, say, a cat in the first act of the film to where the audience is thinking, what's the deal with this cat? And then in chapter 15, they're like, that's what the deal was with the cat. I knew something was up with the cat. That feeling's really thrilling. And uh, as an audiobook narrator, you get to give people that, which I think is really great. It makes you uh, much more viable as a talent. From the nonfiction perspective, it's just important to know what points your author is making and to be able to articulate them. So if you know what different points in different chapters are being made, uh, you kind of have a sense of what's important to give weight to and what you can kind of let slide, um, which just comes with time and experience, I feel. Tip number two, don't be afraid to breathe. You're human, you, and breathing is part of life. And with audiobook narrations, some people that I've uh, either talked to who are starting out get really concerned about their breaths. And just being relaxed, setting the person up uh, that you're talking to as if you're sitting next to their bed, as close as I am to you, the camera, right now, and just tell the story at this level. Uh, you can think of it as a coffee table or bedside conversation where you don't need to be overly animated. You don't have to rush. You can take your time. Certain moments can flow quickly and some can kind of, you can take your time with them. And that just, the stretch and pull of that, breath is all part of it. Breath is one of the important parts of your canvas. It's part of what you're working with. Uh, as a voiceover performer, all you've got are the words you're saying, the silence between them, and your breath. And your breath is what gives everything emotional weight and the space between it. Um, now, that isn't to say that if you find yourself gulping air every couple sentences, that means you can just take the pace down, move a little bit more slowly, and take your time with it, and just breathe as you would naturally. Usually in writing, the uh, punctuation points are good po places to take that breath and make sense of the sentence that's coming up next. Um, but in the middle of a thought, as we humans speak, we'll take breaks in the middle of a phrase, just as we're thinking, as I just did there. Um, and so it's totally fine to take breaks at points that don't necessarily make sense with the punctuation, I think, at least. Tip number three, character voices. If you're doing a fiction book and there's lots of different characters, it can be a major, major challenge and super difficult if you're just starting out to keep them all straight and to keep them all consistent, which is very, very important. 
So a couple of things that I do to help myself out with that is as I'm recording, every time a character voice pops up or a character speaks for the first time, I'll make a marker of that character speaking in my recording software and label it with their name. What that looks like is this. If I pull open my software here and zoom in, a lot of new characters popped up in this scene for me. So I labeled the first time they spoke with their name. And that way, any time later in the book that that character comes up, I can just go back to that marker, listen to the, what they sound like, and refresh my mind and my vocal cords as to how I portrayed them. Uh, some uh, narrators will make little mp3 files for themselves of each character speaking. Maybe as they're reading through the book, they'll make notes. Maybe uh, this character has a gravelly voice, and so I'll give them a gravelly voice, and they're kind of cocky. So gravelly, and they have a cocky disposition. I'll give myself a little mp3 voice memo of that character, label it as such, so that whenever I'm recording and that character pops up, I can listen, and then they're there, and I can call on them as, as they pop up. And then if uh, another character has a different disposition, um, I can make appropriate notes. Those notes will come up again when you read the book. So going back to that step, it's very, very important. Do not skip it. Tip number four, set yourself a schedule and stick to it. Once you get the offer for doing the book, the author or the publishing company says, hey, you're the one. Let's get to work. Uh, ask them when the deadline is, or maybe they'll just tell you straight out, straight out of the gate. From that deadline, you know what you need to do and how quickly you need to work. And within that deadline, I personally like to give myself a buffer. So say the deadline is 14 days from now, two weeks. I'll take those 14 days and I'll give myself four days of wiggle room at the end there. So instead of 14, I'll say, I need to finish the book in 10 days. This is in case anything comes up in my life, a friend stops by, I'm having a bad day, my voice just won't behave, I'm super tired, my performance is lacking, another job comes up that I have to squeeze in really quickly. Uh, I've got four days to play with at the end there in case something like that happens. So then I've got 10 days, and say the book is 400 pages long. 400 divided by 10, I've got to do 40 pages a day. I will stick to this schedule, give or take 10 pages either way. Within that 40-page schedule, I'll try and note chapter breaks. And the reason why chapter breaks or mid-chapter breaks are really, really important to consider here is because as a human being, your voice changes from hour to hour, from day to day, from morning to night, depending on how much you've spoken in recent history to how li your voice changes a lot depending on when you're talking. So if you take a break mid-sentence at the end of the day and come back the next morning to pick up from where you left off, there's going to be a really sharp shift in your vocal quality, which can be jarring to the listener. Uh, so I think of them as bookmark places. If I was reading a book in my own personal life, and there's a point in the book where a bookmark makes sense to just put in there, close the book, go to bed for the night or whatever. Uh, those are maybe good ways to think of where you could stop. Points where a passage of time makes sense. And that way, your vocal change, the change in your vocal quality, won't be very jarring for the listener, and it just makes you a little bit better of a narrator. And tip number five. We touched on it a couple times, but I think it bears repeating. Slow is fast when it comes to audiobooks. You don't want to rush when you're recording. You don't want to rush your pace of narration. If a question comes up, uh, say you don't know how to pronounce a word and it's popping up a lot, ask the author the question on how to pronounce it and uh, wait for the response. Don't just make something up and keep going. Take your time. Slow is fast. And all of this is to say, because at the end of the day, if you make a mistake or make the wrong decision, a word comes up, say the author invented a country and you don't know how to pronounce the country. You just make a choice. And then the author listens to the book and says, you pronounced the country wrong. And that country pops up a lot. You're going to have to go back and re-record that. Whereas instead, you could have just asked the author right out of the gate, uh, actually, would you mind sending me an MP3 
of how you would say this country's name. And taking it slow saves you a lot of time in the long run on just about every, every sense of the word. Slow is fast. So those are five tips on how to have a successful audiobook narration. Uh, if you've got any questions about these or any other questions that may pop up about audiobooks or anything else, drop me a line below and I'll get back to you ASAP. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Toodles.